It was another significant event in the calendar of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria as it conferred three categories of honors to 250 distinguished Nigerians in the banking, financial services, technology, policy and business space at the 2021 Fellowship Investiture in Lagos. The categories covered honorary fellows, associates who now emerge fellows and honorary senior members. In his opening remarks, the President and Chairman of Council CIBN, Dr. Bayo Olubemi, FCIB, shared the essence of the event and the choice of the theme for this course. And I welcome you all very warmly to the 2021 CIBN Fellowship Investiture. Today is indeed the day the Lord has made, and we are glad in it. I want to thank everyone that has made our time today out of their very, very busy schedules to be part of this special event. Today, we are gathered here to honor eminent individuals who have distinguished themselves in their chosen profession and have contributed significantly to the growth and development of the Institute, the banking industry, and indeed, the economy at large. Esteemed audience, it will interest you to know that a total of 237 individuals will be honored today in the following categories. 14 honorary fellows, 77 elected fellows, 146 honorary senior members of our noble profession. I want to use this opportunity to congratulate all the deserving awardees and honorees who, through dint of hard work and blessings of God, have risen to the pinnacle of their profession. The honor bestowed upon you today is a testament of your outstanding qualities, dedication, determination, unwavering commitment, and exemplary character which stood you out of a path. I felicitate with you on this noble achievement and I encourage you to remain steadfast and committed to the tenets of honesty, trust, and integrity, which is the hallmark of the banking profession. Special guest of honor, Dr. Shamsuddin Usman, OFR CON, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Susman and Associates, lauded CIBN for evolving into a global center of reference in skills development and capacity for the banking and finance industry. Trust, they say, is gained, while honesty is the foundation for gaining trust. From starting as a local center in 1963 to its incorporation in 1976 and attaining its chartered status in 1990, the CIBN has not rested on its oars in its quest to be a global leader and a reference point for skills and conduct in the banking and finance industry. I'm very proud to say my association with CIBN dates back to the early 1980s, so about 40 plus years. Through its many stellar initiatives and diligent and honest execution of its mandate, the CIBN has become a bastion and beacon of ethics, transparency, professionalism, accountability, and good corporate governance in the banking and finance industry. Delivering the keynote at the event, Mr. Taiwo Yirele, the Africa tax leader, PricewaterhouseCoopers, called for a national integrated revenue and debt spending strategy for Nigeria to address the rising debt profile. The good news is that Nigerians are willing to pay their taxes if things get better. Nigeria is just an amazing country. If we can face the issues we have, I do not see any country in the world that can compete with Nigeria. So, for individuals, household, they are number one priority, or let me say the top two priority for them is education and healthcare. And that gives me a lot of hope that as depressed, as poor, 
as Nigerians, many Nigerians are not all Nigerians, they still prioritize the most important things. You know, if government must give us one thing, let it first and foremost be education. If government can give another thing, let it be healthcare. That's human capital development. For companies and businesses, they are top two priorities. You know, it's also not surprising. He said, government just give us security first so we can do our business. If you must give us something else, give us electricity. See the two priorities, businesses, security, electricity. Household and individual, education and healthcare. So in case you want to be our next president, just take note, those are the things Nigerians are asking for. We also ask the tax people themselves. He said, tax officers, why is it that you, know, you are not able to collect revenue? What are you seeing? And they say, we too, we have our own issues. Number one is inconsistent policy. Government is confusing us, and so we don't even know what we're supposed to do. We have limited resources to do our work. We have unrealistic targets, and there's significant political interference in what we do. That's what the tax people said. So having said all of this, so what does it mean? We're not paying taxes. Government is borrowing. Our debt service to revenue ratio is rising, and we are concerned. But can we do something about it? The answer is yes. Here are my thoughts about what we can do. Of course, if you allow me the whole day, I won't finish my presentation. So I'm trying to summarize. Number one, in terms of next steps, number one, we need to define clearly what is it that we consider as a debt in this country. And our definition, I do not expect to be very different from the rest of the world. If you award contracts to contractors and they've done the work and you have not paid them, that's a liability. If you print money from CBN and spend, that's a liability. Capture it. Let's understand and identify what is it that is debt and do so in a transparent manner. Number two, develop a national integrated revenue spending and debt management strategy. I just mentioned three things. My observation in Nigeria is we have strategy for debt management. We have strategy for revenue collection. We have a strategy for budgeting, but they are disconnected and disjointed. Number three, address concerns regarding the social contracts and leverage technology to drive revenue. Let Nigerians see something for the little they are paying. When Nigerians say we pay so much in taxes and government say we collect so little, you know they are not lying, both of them are correct. It's just that we need to reconcile it. When Nigerians say we pay a lot in taxes, they are talking about the taxes they pay to government. They are talking about the informal taxes they pay to non-state actors. You know there was a report recently that Agberos collect 123 billion naira annually in Lagos. That is the highest IGR of any state in Nigeria other than Lagos states. So Nigerians count that as taxes. You can define taxes the way you want. That's not their business. Somebody forces them to pay. That is tax. You know, number three tax they pay is implicit tax. There's formal tax. There's formal tax is paid to government. There's informal tax. It's paid to non-state actors. There's implicit tax. This is when you begin to perform the function of government using your own resources. That's an implicit tax. When you add the three together, Nigerians pay one of the highest tax rates in the world. Unfortunately, it doesn't get to government because only one portion of that three gets to government. Even that portion, they use consultancy to extract significant portion of it. I sat down at a retreat with a tax agency in Nigeria and I saw a tax revenue where the consultant collects 15%. The state collects 15%. The balance is shared to local government. An individual is collecting the same amount as the state. How can tax revenue be high enough? So finally, we need to stimulate economic development through robust policies and sound governance. The biggest solution to our problem is to create prosperity. When firms are prosperous, they pay taxes. When individuals are prosperous, they pay taxes. There are companies in the U.S. today 
that the tax you get from one company alone, Apple's tax alone in one year, is more than the revenue that the FRS generates in a whole year. So we need to fix these challenges. And we must use data and intelligence to ensure that those with abilities to pay are paying their fair share of revenue. And all of us collectively, right, not only pay our fair share, we jointly and individually hold government to account. Highlight of the event was the formal conferment of the Honorary Fellows on 14 distinguished Nigerians who would become Honorary Fellows, 93 Associates, and 51 Honorary Senior Members of the Institute. Among the Honorary Fellows include Dr. Mrs. Ngozi Okonji Wala, Director General of the World Trade Organization, Mr. Kingsley Obiora, Deputy Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, and Mr. Olufemi Awemi, Founder and Chairman of ProShare. By the powers conferred on me, by the Governing Council of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, I, by your Lugemi FCIB, President and Chairman of Council, do we have I confer on you all, jointly and severally, the fellowship of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria with all rights, privileges, and obligations there to attach. Congratulations. The President of the CIBN, Dr. Bayo Lubemi, FCIB, speaks further on the investiture and the need to address Nigeria's rising debt profile. Talking about the, the theme, which is around the uh, rising profile of our debts, uh, the external debt, the fact remains that, uh, just like everybody has said in my opening speech, the, the, the main guest speaker, and of course, uh, Dr. Usman, uh, Shams Usman, the former Deputy Governor of Central Bank, it is not bad in itself, per se, to borrow, either as uh, corporates, either as individuals, either as uh, subnational or national. It's not a sin or it's not a bad thing to borrow. But the most important thing is what is that borrowing or that loan being used for and the ability to service the loan. I think that is the, the, the challenge that we have and that is the concern of everybody in Nigeria today. Um, and if you see the, the GDP ratio to, to external loan, it's been said that 76% uh, and above is, is, uh, uh, is, is, is a problem. And we are still under 30%, which means it's not actually bad to borrow. But what are we using it for? Are we using the loan for the purpose or purposes it's meant for? And like somebody said also, uh, I think the, the, the guest speaker, even using it for the purpose it is meant for, is it being optimally used? For example, a road that's, that is not supposed to be more than three billion, if you spend 10 billion for it, and it's financed by external borrowers, that's a challenge. And that's a challenge that most Nigerians are, are, are expressing. But by and large, it is not a bad thing to borrow. However, we must watch it. We must watch the, the, the type of borrowings we are taking. We must watch the implication in the future, we must watch the fact that these borrowings, I used to finance uh, capital expenditures, not the current. I think that's a major challenge. And I believe, I want to believe that um, this government will do the needful. The 2021 CIBN Fellowship Investiture brings to the fore the value placed on professionalism, hard work and integrity in the banking and financial services industry. It's expected that the honorees will bring their wealth of experience to move the institute forward.